The first one, of course, being college football expansion. Now, let me write down my time here, make sure I got a good clip. College football expansion, or at least the playoff. The expansion of the CFP has been delayed for another two years. So at the end of the 2025 season, heading into the 2026 season, is when we are looking at an expansion of the playoff. Now, currently, we only have four teams in the playoff. The idea was, at least that was floated over the summer before all of the Texas and Oklahoma to the SEC talk began, the talk was that this would be a 12-team format with a bye for the first two seeds, and then the other seeds, or excuse me, the first four seeds, and five would play 12, six would play 11, seven would play 10, eight would play nine. And then those teams would play against the top four seeds, and so forth and so on. Uh, those teams would host sites on campus, etc. They're still trying to figure out the bowl situation, whatever. The way that this thing came down was an 8-3 vote. It has to be unanimous in order for them to approve expansion early. The 8-3 vote, of course, went the direction that everybody thought that it would. It was the alliance that had the three votes against, and that would be the Pac-12, the Big Ten, and the ACC. Now, why the ACC or the Pac-12 would want to vote against this, who knows? We have talked about it ad nauseum on this show in the past, but basically, the ACC wanted an eight-team format, but even then, they really didn't want that. What they wanted was for everybody to come back to the table and to discuss all of the other problems that are going on inside of the sport. The Big Ten, of course, wants to get other TV providers involved. That would include, most likely, Fox Sports, who would love to be a partner of the playoff. If they were to expand early, that would mean that more uh, more of this would go to ESPN. They have exclusive negotiating rights before that 2026 window and the negotiations are probably going to start in the next two years, so they need to figure something out over the next 24 to eh, 36 months, somewhere around there. This is, uh, this is becoming an issue because the SEC may not come back to the table. Uh, it, let's, let's stick back on the Pac-12 for just a minute. The Pac-12, of course, came out with a statement afterwards saying, you know, the vote didn't pass, uh, we really would want an expanded playoff, blah, 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 blah. They're saying that they want an expanded playoff, and yet they voted against it. And I don't know if they didn't know that their vote was going to be public I, or, or other people wouldn't talk about it. I mean, it's kind of insane to think that nobody is going to figure out what you're saying, but they voted against it, and yet they want an expanded playoff. The current setup that everybody has talked about since last summer was six auto bids, and that would be for the six highest-rated conference champions – regardless of conference. And I don't know why that wouldn't work for all of these conferences. I, the Pac-12 wants it to be auto bids for the P5 conferences, same with the ACC. The issue there is they may not have one of the six highest rated conference champions at some point, which is kind of absurd to think, especially with the direction that realignment is going. I just, it, it doesn't make any sense to me why they wouldn't go ahead and do this, especially because, and now we'll head over to the SEC portion of this, the SEC may not come back to the table. What, what does the SEC have to gain by this? I understand more money, but more money is not always everything, right? The SEC is going to go back to the uh, negotiating table with ESPN. They're going to get more money for having Texas and Oklahoma join. They're going to be a 16-team Super League. They could do their own playoff. They could do their own playoff, and I heard uh, Dan Wetzel and Pat Forty talk about this on the College Football Inquirer podcast from Yahoo Sports, but they could basically come at this with, you know, their top four teams, have their own little playoff to a conference championship, and then the winner of that faces off against whoever. Or they can come to the table with the Big 12, which it would be absolutely hilarious, thinking of Bob Bowlesby having to go into negotiations with the SEC on a playoff after they had to do their own realignment and whatnot, but... You bring in the Big 12, bring in uh, Notre Dame, uh, bring in some of those G5 conferences if they, if they want to. They could do anything at this point. The SEC can do whatever they want to and tell the alliance to shove it. They could, Or they can keep it at four, which is what Greg Sankey has said all along. We are perfectly fine at four. The SEC is the only conference that has not missed a playoff. 
They have made every single playoff dating back to uh, its inception in 2014. They've had multiple years with two contestants. Uh, This year, the same thing. We have had an all-SEC national title game in two of the last four years. That is absolutely absurd. They could do what they want to. They may want to stick it for. And if that's the case, okay, at this point, I'm beginning to think maybe that's not such a bad idea. Maybe it's not such a bad idea to just stick it for and leave it alone. But, alas, we will see. I'm sure that something will come to the table. But the Pac-12 and the ACC deciding to vote against this, and same with the Big Ten, they understand, yes, they're going to make oodles of money on their next TV contract. But if they want to remain relevant, if they want to remain uh, a viable recruiting option for a lot of these star players, you're going to have to come up with something. You are going to have to come up with something. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.